Hello everyone, my name is Song Joo Sun, Director of Digital Government Corporation Division of Korean Ministry of the Interior and Safety. It's my pleasure to introduce the past, present, and the future of the Korean digital government. Let's start with the history of the Korean digital government. Back in 1955, Korea was one of the least developed countries in the world. Korea had more than 20 million people, but less than 0.2% of population had telephones, and GNI per capita was 65 US dollars. As of 2019, we have 56 million mobile phones in Korea, and GNI per capita is more than $30,000. Digital government has certainly contributed to this rapid growth. It has been more than 50 years since the beginning of digital government in Korea when Korean government introduced its first computer for census. Computerization and informatization of public administration were planned and executed at the pan-government level in 1980s and 1990s. In 2001, the enactment of e-government law triggered the nationwide scale e-government projects with top political priority. The Government Data Center, constructed in 2005, was another important milestone of Korean digital government. The integrated data center, shared by all ministries, enabled system integration and remodeling, which led to higher efficiency and security. In 2010, we applied cloud computing technology to the government data center, enhanced our service delivery with the mobile applications and integrated web portals such as gov.kr. Open data was another key policy. Korean government shared a large number of public data sets with the private sector to facilitate digital economy. Now we are developing the vision of intelligent digital government with the help of emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence. Next, I would like to introduce some of our achievements. This slide shows an overview of major digital government services in Korea. Various services are implemented on the basis of e-government data center. These services make Korean government more efficient, effective, and transparent. Some services such as Unipass, eCustoms, and CalNAPS e-procurement are adopted by other countries. The official e-documents in Korea are created, processed, and stored by Onnara Business Process System. Onnara means all across the nation in Korean. Onnara system represents digitized internal workflow of the Korean government. The system is used by 890,000 government employees in 289 agencies. The number of documents created was 125 million in 2017 alone. The documents are in XML-based standard format and encrypted by digital signatures. GAO24 is a single window for all digital government services. People can get certificates, submit applications, and search for information through gov.kr or gov24 mobile app. Korean government is improving gov24 continuously to provide more tailored information and service recommendation for each citizen. Currently, gov24 includes more than 90,000 public services and 1,500 online forms. Tax authorities around the world they provide services that allow tax return filing online. Home Tax has provided a comprehensive online tax administration services, including tax return filing, since 2002. Taxpayers can take care of their tax matters anytime, anywhere, without having to visit tax offices in person. At present, 19 million out of 15 million Koreans utilize the Home Tax services through their accounts. In 2018, the annual number of visits to home tax was over 1.9 billion. ePeople is a platform for public policy participation and civil complaints. Citizens can suggest, discuss, and elaborate policies through ePeople. All government entities share this platform to hear and solve civil complaints 
with the Pan Government Corporation. The Korean citizens also can raise their voices through the online petition to the president. It is a direct communication channel to the president's office. People can make and consent petitions anytime, and the president's office gives official replies to the petitions with more than 200,000 consents. Korea ranked first in UN e-government survey, both of the e-government development index and e-participation index, three consecutive times in 2010, 2012, and 2014. In 2020, Korea ranked second in e-government development index and first in e-participation index. These are the key success factors. Success factors from a macroscopic viewpoint are innovative and early adapting culture, decisive and sustained investment, rapid growth of ICT industry, world top class internet speed, strong and systematic leadership, and visionary mid-long-term plans. Successful technical factors are integrated infrastructure and platform, unified application, and standardized data. Last, success factors from an administrative viewpoint are early adoption of civil registration, which helped us to organize public data and identify individuals. Dedicated project funding and prioritizing essential services, which led to efficient investment, and thorough management of IT projects, from planning to inspection phase, which assured the quality of our e-government services. Now, I would like to share the Korean government's future strategies with you. The government first created the Digital Government Innovation Plan in 2019. However, in the face of a COVID-19 pandemic, the government had to revise the plan, better suited to the new normal after the COVID-19. Digital government innovation can be the door to a better world, using digital technologies to their fullest potential. We are going to expand non-contact government services and innovate government service delivery through creating a collaborative digital ecosystem and enhancing our digital infrastructure. Due to COVID-19, citizens' need for non-contact services has greatly increased. To meet the needs, it is essential to use accumulated public data to its fullest potential. And private-public partnership should be expanded to create collaborative and inclusive digital ecosystem. At the same time, better infrastructure is required to be prepared for unexpected emergencies in the post-COVID-19 era. To implement effective and convenient non-contact services, it is essential to re-engineer the government administration process. Mobile digital ID and My Data projects will be our catalyst for whole work process re-engineering. All the processes based on paper forms will be redesigned based on data sets and online transactions. In the ideal future, almost every public service could be applied and delivered without physical contact. Human-friendly interfaces using natural language such as chatbots and voice assistants could be the key to service delivery innovation as they can improve user experience and lower the required level of digital literacy at the same time. With the association between these human-friendly front-end interfaces and integrated, customizable, and seamless back-end services, our government could be a very helpful friend to its citizen. However, it's a very long and difficult way for a government to achieve true digital innovation. Partnership with the private sector will make this journey easier and shorter. And the private sector will also benefit in the course of collaboration. For example, opening public data and services will contribute to both service innovation and growth of digital economy by creating unprecedented personalized services for finance management. Connectivity and accessibility would be more important due to the expansion of non-contact digital services. 
and cybersecurity is a mandatory requirement to provide reliable and robust services. Most of all, digital inclusion should be considered to leave no citizen behind. Digital infrastructure should be enhanced to resolve these issues and government officials should be trained to fully utilize the infrastructure and related digital services. In summary, we need a comprehensive approach for successful digital government innovation. Data, cloud, and AI are indisputable key elements of innovation and government services should be innovated from the ground up. Digital ecosystem should be nurtured with open government and private-public collaboration. We also need to secure core talent to construct and operate platforms and services and improve digital skills of public officials. During these changes, we might need to refine government structures and functions. The journey of Korean government to an intelligent digital government has just begun. I'm looking forward to sharing new achievements, experiences with you in the near future. Thank you for your attention.